the three women who could hold the title First Queen of England. Throughout history there have been many kings who have sat upon the English throne as a monarch. Compared to it, there have been few, but in some ways more famous, queens who have ruled the English throne. Some come easily to mind, such as those of Queen Elizabeth, both first and second, Queen Anne and Queen Victoria. And in some eyes, it would seem that the English throne is better suited for a female monarch than a male if one was to judge by history, though the argument may also be made against. However, the first Queen of England, that is a different story altogether. A controversial at the time decision, one that had many oppose and some even go to war to prevent a woman from sitting on the throne as monarch. Yet in this modern day, many still reel from the strangeness of a king now back on the throne when, for most, all they have ever known was a queen. It is hard to believe so many opposed a woman ruling a nation. And if one was to look at the history of women ruling the nation, one would think those nobles more full from everything that came to be when a woman ruled. The title of First Queen of England is one for debate, as there is three candidates who could or should have held the title throughout history. Historians debate far and wide on who it should be who holds that position, and each have their own reasons for why. In the course of this video, we shall be going over these three queens. It won't be in detail, and there will be following videos that will go over each of these individual queens in detail, but it should give you an overview on why historians believe they should hold this title. The first queen, the one who should be queen. Our first queen that some believe should hold this title is one who has never been Queen of England, although law dictated she should have been Queen of England. Sounds a little complicated, doesn't it? Let us continue. The daughter of Henry I of England, Matilda, was the oldest of his children. Her younger brother William was naturally the king's heir, until the White Ship disaster where he unfortunately passed away. Henry I then made his daughter who can also be known throughout history as Empress Matilda or Empress Maud, his heir. He had the barons of England swear an oath to his daughter of loyalty to her and her successors. Theoretically, as soon as the king took his final breath, his daughter became the Queen of England, as it still is today. However, things did not happen straightforward that way. Matilda faced many oppositions from the barons, they did not want a woman to sit upon the throne of England, and so they went back on their oaths and formed a coup. Whilst Matilda was still in Normandy, the barons crowned her cousin Stephen as King of England. Matilda was commonly referred to as the Lady of England, but not as a Queen. Subsequent events are known throughout history as Anarchy, a war between two sides. The war ended for Matilda in a stalemate so she left it to her son Henry to continue and return to rule Normandy. Matilda did not hold the title Queen of England, even though she did rule a portion of it during the war. Her son, however, did go on to be successor to Stephen and become Henry II of England. So to recap, the main points the historians give on why she should hold the title Queen of England is 1. She technically became Queen when her father took her last breath and it wasn't until subsequently a series of time had gone past before her cousin, Stephen, was crowned King of England. So during that small gap, she was technically speaking the monarch. Secondly, by law, it was her right to be Queen of England, and technically speaking, her cousin Stephen is classified as a usurper. And three, during the War of Anarchy, England was divided up between the two sides. Matilda contained a large chunk of England. This did also include London in this territory that she had subsequently conquered. Although it ended in a stalemate and she didn't manage to take all of England and subsequently left it to her son, 
she still contained enough of England that, technically speaking, she could class herself as the queen of it, since she did rule it. But there are others who could hold such title. Now, for some, if you are feeling that this sounds a bit familiar to them, it is known that George R. R. Martin took anarchy, or parts of it, as his inspiration in the creation of The House of the Dragon, a popular TV show which is part of Targaryen history. The second queen, nine days did she sit. As some may have guessed, our second queen, who could bear the title Queen of England, is the Lady Jane Grey. Lady Jane Grey was proclaimed queen by the Bishop Ridley of London after the passing of King Edward VI. Edward had named his cousin Jane as his successor in a bid to keep the throne Protestant. Although King Henry VIII laid out his succession law that if his son failed to have any children, the succession would then go through his daughters in age order, Edward had a problem with this. Although Elizabeth was Protestant, their elder sister, Mary, who would come first in the succession, was a stout Catholic. Edward knew that Mary would change the kingdom back to Catholicism and if given the chance would undo all the changes that not only Edward had made but also that their father King Henry VIII had. In addition there was members of the nobility who made ploys not only to use Jane as a pawn but also to sit a member of the nobility on the throne through her. Although an innocent pawn in a man's bid for power Jane was proclaimed queen and did theoretically rule for nine days. She resided in the Tower of London, awaiting her coronation, and when Mary marched upon London, her residence became her prison. Due to the brevity of Jane's reign upon England, although with the coup for power and speculation of legitimacy of Edward's succession decision, many do not give the title Queen of England to the uncrowned Nine Days Queen. So to recap, the main points that historians give on why Lady Jane Grey should hold the title are the following. King Edward VI named her as his successor, and as such the following procedures went through when he passed away. This one can be a bit argued due to the fact that Edward didn't reach his majority, so everything had to go through a regency for him to pass laws. So, theoretically, Henry VIII's law, with his succession parameters, does kind of still stand. But, it depends on the historian's point of view. Second, Jane did rule for nine days. She didn't do much during that nine days, I will admit. But she was proclaimed queen by the bishop and by many other religious members. And she was called and treated like the Queen of England for nine days, until Mary arrived in London. The third queen, the first to be crowned. The third on this list is the one many historians agree could bear the title first Queen of England, as she is a Queen of England. She was the first Queen of England to be crowned, and she ruled in her own right for between five and six years. On the 1st of October 1553, Mary, daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, made her way through London to Westminster Abbey to be crowned Queen. Many were torn between their love for the tragic daughter of their beloved and wronged Queen Catherine of Aragon and their fear of what Mary's ascension might mean for the fledgling Church of England. Yet after the ceremony, which lasted a full seven hours, including the singing of the Mass, the newly crowned Queen Mary became the first female monarch to sit on the throne of England and rule for a number of years before her death. Besides being the first one of these three women to be crowned as Queen of England, is one of the most major points in why people believe she should hold the title. I think one of the other most significant points for her to have the title would be the fact that she ruled. Empress Matilda did in some ways rule part of England, and Jane was but a puppet monarch. Mary was the first to rule with a privy council, 
and affect the laws of the land for many of the years before her death. So, to overall recap for Mary I, the main points historians give to argue that she should hold the title is 1. She was dictated to be the Queen of England after the death of Edward by her father's succession right. Additionally, because Edward passed away when he was still in his minority, Henry VIII's succession right still held up. The second is that she was the first woman to be crowned as the ruling monarch of England. Yes, there's been many queens of England, but they are technically speaking consorts to the monarch. She was the first ever crowned ruling monarch of England. And thirdly, not only she was she the first ruling crowned monarch of England, but she also ruled England. She didn't rule it through a man, and she wasn't influenced by indiv- other individuals. She ruled it in her own right with a privy council, and she affected the laws of the land, which some laws still exist to this day. Overall, which do you think holds the title? In some ways, it could be seen as a decision between person and facts. For myself, for example, the facts tell me that Mary should hold the title as the first female queen as she ruled in her own right and not as a puppet. In my heart, I would give it to Matilda, as she did rule, yes, only a part of England, but she conquered and ruled it in the battle known as Anarchy. In addition, she was the one entitled to rule. However, history is a very different story to the modern world, especially when it comes to women in power. Let me know in the comments below who you would have holding the title, and if you would like to hear more about these three members of the Royal Dynasty of England, do like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.